Hello. This is the Blues 32 trying once again to record this game. Ah, oh, it's been four, five attempts. Each one a bigger failure than the last. But enough about that. Let's talk about what we have here. This is Clock Tower. The sequel to Clock Tower. It really is. The original Clock Tower was released in the Super Famicom and had no in American release. You can get it translated, but that's about it. And what you're seeing now is indeed a scene from the original game. With a knife? No, it sounds crazy, but it looks like they were killed with a giant pair of scissors. The giant scissors, once again, search for prey. The trail of terror stretches across Europe, from Norway to England. Check out these amazing graphics. Here it is, the Barrow's Mansion. We'll have to go there and look around, but we'll never solve the mystery of scissors. One after another, the horrifying murders continue. Who will make it through this game of murder alive? Hmm. Clock Tower. Place your bets, everybody. C L O C K T O W E R. A clock tower, I should have known. Another fun thing to note clock, the original clock tower was based on Phenomenon, starring Jennifer Connolly. as well as Donald Pleasant. Oh, so trippy. Yes. Yes. What? What on earth are you doing, Professor? You must I'm having my wicked way with her. He's not ready to remember the murders yet. Helen, the clock tower murders. Well, I wanted to remember the murders now. I must know the truth of what happened. She can't take any more of this today, Professor. I'm taking her home. All right. But remember one thing, Helen. Is that a neckerchief or like an undershirt? I can't. I can't tell. How dare they walk out on me? I'd give them a piece of my mind, but I can't seem to do so. Yes, despite being on the PlayStation, it has basically a point-and-click adventure. The clock tower murders. The mass murder of over ten victims in this case. How intriguing. Jennifer Simpson, one, only one of two survivors. I have to get information out of her for future profiling materials. A file cabinet. Patients' records are kept here. What's this? There is a memo stuck between the pages. You found hint number one. The hint that tells you how to select your character. This is just a prologue. It doesn't really contain anything important.
other than basically showing you that you can just click on things and things will happen. Hmm, there is a faint smell of ammonia. A pair of giant scissors are on the desk. They are a replica of the scissors used by the murderer in the clock tower case. These are like the weapons used to slash up his victims. Yeah, that bodes well. That whole everything going red and ominous. Sure, that won't lead to anything. Chunk. My laboratory. Lately, I've been doing mostly criminal psychology research. Hmm, the staff is still here. I should hope so. It seems to still be daylight out. A statue. It is cold. One of the items found at the scene of the clock tower murders. It seems to be hiding some sort of secret. It would be go a good idea to get an expert opinion on this. A stuffed animal looks like a prize won at a fair. Professor Helen left a few minutes ago and she looked really angry. Did she? Hmm. You know, Helen and Jennifer are really beginning to look like sisters, aren't they? I guess that's what happens when you live together. One mustn't let their personal feelings get in the way. And in case you're wondering, yes, I'm reading it like that on purpose. Jennifer is nothing more than another research subject. Uh, yes. Yes, you're right. Of course I'm right. I'm in charge here. My name's Professor Barton. Okay, look at the mask. We cannot leave until we do some stuff in here. Scissor Man's Rubber Mask. A kind sold in cheap novelty shops and seems to be fairly popular. People certainly buy stupid things. Professor, a newspaper reporter is here. Did you have an appointment for an interview? No. It's about the clock tower murders, isn't it? Isn't it? Humph. <laughs> I guess they want to sensationalize this scissor man who really doesn't even exist. Scissor man. It'd be cool if you were real. Huh? Er, uh, just a joke. Uh, I'm not a murderer. Can we leave now? Uh, no, there isn't. I swear to you, there is nothing left for you to do in here. Harris's desk. Clipped out articles of the clock tower story are scattered about. It seems Harris has gone somewhere. Can I leave now? Is that what I needed to know? That Harris has gone somewhere? Oh, God. Harris, or the character selection screen. You talk to him once, you get to play as the blonde, Helen. Talk to him twice, you play as Jennifer. Yes, the same Jennifer from the previous game. I'm going to play as Helen, because that seems to be the choice that not many people go with. Oh, Professor, a newspaper reporter was looking for you on the first floor. Oh, thank you. Click. Then step into the void. There's no car in there! My cat is playing with his favorite toy, a stuffed Santa head. Oh, Professor. I am the one who called you from the Oslo Weekly News. My name is Nolan Campbell. 
and this is Tim, my cameraman. It's a pleasure. I'm a bit busy, please keep it brief. Then I'll get right to the point. Have you been able to figure out who the murderer is? I can't say anything for sure yet because the victim's testimony lacks credibility. Oh, do you mean the victim that's testifying? That'd be Jennifer Simpson, wouldn't it? Yes, but what about her? Oh, uh, nothing really. It's just that we saw her leaving a few minutes ago. And since we'd run into her, we asked her for an interview, but she refused. You just said her testimony lacked credibility. I know what you were going to say. I'm psychic. That monster she was talking about, the Scissor Man, and whether he really exists or not. That's it. That's right. That is what our readers want to know. Because the existence of this Scissor Man has become a symbol of terror among youngsters. Youngsters? Yes, and that's because trashy gossip magazines like yours have sensationalized the whole thing. Ouch. That hurts. Not much I can say to that, is there? No. You have to take your lumps. Well, let's start from the conclusion. It's fact that there was a murderer who used a giant pair of scissors as his murder weapon. But that doesn't make him into an immortal monster. We're just dealing with some odd screwball. But what about what she said? Well, what did she say? She was scared. She thought she saw something. Oh, I see, but... Okay, that's it. Interview's over. You disgust me. There is something I must be attending to. Ah, well, okay. I understand. Thank you very much. Sorry I couldn't be as much helped as you had hoped. Dick. I have to get back to the lab. I'm expecting another survivor of the clock tower... murders. He's supposed to be a young boy, about ten years... old. Double click to run. Not that it matters at this point. Nothing's chasing us yet. Professor, the boy that survived the clock tower murders is here. Oh, has he arrived already? Yes. He's waiting in the therapy room. Has he arrived already? Well, yeah. Yeah, I'd say he has, since you've just been told that he's here. <clears throat> oh, that's right. I still need to get an expert opinion on this statue. I should probably ask Professor Sullivan, the head librarian at the Metropolitan... Metro you know, I'm not even going to bother. Library. Yes, but there was that old butler at the borough's mansion named Rick. I'll show it to him first to see if he knows anything. I'm pretty sure he lives in the suburbs. I could ask Harris to show it to him. Ask Harris? Yes slash no. This is important. Whichever one you pick, you have to remember, because if you get the choice wrong later, you're going to get ending E. All right, I'll ask Harris to show it to Rick. Harris, would you take this statue and show it no, to a, a man named Rick? Blech. Is that the statue that was at the scene of the murders? Yes, it is. Would you ask him if he knows anything about it? 
Yes, I'll go and ask him on my way home this evening. Very good. Thank you. Okay, that's that. I should probably go to the therapy room. Yes, and end this torture. I've played this so many times. Please let it work. Thank you very much for coming. How do you do? I am an instructor at the Granite Orphanage. I am Edward's guardian. Edward? I thought he completely lost all his memories from the shock. Does he remember his name? No, I call him Edward because not having a name to go by makes things very difficult. You don't say. Now, since this is our first day, will you answer some simple questions for me? Okay, Edward? Now, I want you to honestly tell me everything you remember about what happened. Er, yes. So, you want him to tell you nothing? He remembers nothing. Was this not made clear? Well, then, let's get started. <sighs> okay. That's the prologue finished. God willing, this is the last time I have to show you this. Well, you wouldn't have to see the other ones, but... Let's hope this is just the last time, alright? I, I thank you all for watching, and hope to see you in the next one. Uh, bye bye